What's going on guys, this is Rob. Uh, if you guys enjoy my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell so you never miss out on my sexy voice. All right, what's going on guys? This is Rob and we're doing another episode of Too Powerful for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And my girlfriend Mariah is here. Say hi, Mariah. Hi, Mariah. <laughs> okay, so, so too powerful for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, Protégé. All right, we've talked about Protégé like a million times before. So we have to cover, we have to cover the character of Protégé. All right, so Marvel, Marvel has a hierarchy of powerful people, right? Like you got the one above all, all the way to the very top. And then you've got like the Beyonders, who I would put right below the one above all, because they kill the Living Tribunal. Then you have the Living Tribunal, you got like the Custodian of the Multiverse, so on and so forth. Now, these are all beings who are powerful in their own right because their power calls for it. Most beings in Marvel Comics are powerful because they have a predefined set of powers which manifested at some point in time. And as a result of that, they can go forward and do things, right? Like Vulcan, the third summer's brother, can manipulate every form of energy. Charles Xavier has telepathy. The Phoenix Force is the sum total of all life that has ever, currently does, and will ever exist in the multiverse. Then you have Protégé. And Protégé was a character who was created by the Universal Church of Truth. So, why the clock back? <laughs> so, what you had here in Marvel Comics is you had Adam Warlock. And most everybody knows who Adam Warlock is, which is to say he's basically like the Jesus equivalent of Marvel Comics. Now, the way that Adam Warlock's character was originally created, he was established by Stanley and Jack Kirk and you had a group called the Enclave. And the Enclave was this organization that basically sought to conquer the world using technological means. They came into conflict with the Fantastic Four, but they created a perfect being called him. And when the perfect being escaped, it took off into space, it tried to marry Sif, like, Adam Warlock and Thor got into a battle for a little while, and then eventually Adam Warlock met the High Evolutionary, and the High Evolutionary basically gave him the Soul Stone and said, your job is to go to counter Earth, it's like a different Earth that orbits the moon, and you have to defeat Man Beast, who was an allegory for Satan, and then that led into, you know, the, the whole story of Adam Warlock becoming Christ. Anyway, when Jim Starlin took over the character of Adam Warlock, which basically started intertwining Adam with, like, the story of Thanos, that what ended up happening was there was a future version of Adam called the Magus, and the Magus is an answer to the question, what if Adam Warlock became a bad guy? And so what the Magus had done in the main Marvel Universe is in the far-flung future, he created an organization called the Universal Church of Truth. And the Universal Church of Truth served the purpose of literally living to its namesake, which is to say, like, sweeping across the universe and just conquering world after world and conscripting various people into its cause, which was to worship the Magus in his entirety, treat him like a messiah, and then just do his bidding. In an alternate reality called Earth-691, the whole the, the story played out the exact same way. The difference here is that the Magus never returned. And because the Magus never came back, the leaders of the Universal Church of Truth didn't really know how to respond. And so what they did is they basically created their own leader, like their, their own messiah of sorts, which came in the form of, uh, of, of Protégé. And Protégé was a little kid that had the ability to duplicate the powers of everyone. Like he had, he had the ability to duplicate the powers of others. And it was cool because we'd seen power mimicry in the past, but there'd never really been an instance where we'd see, at least up until that point when Protégé was introduced, where we had seen an instance of a character who could duplicate the powers of others with no upper limit. When Protégé first popped up, Protégé basically uh, started duplicating the powers of the Guardians of the Galaxy, or at least Guardians of the Galaxy 3000. This was back in, so back in 91, back before the Guardians that you guys know now, which were actually created by Brian Michael Bendis, you had the Guardians of the Galaxy 3000, which were just a future version of the team, and they fought alongside like Thor, different things like that. Protégé basically starts copying their powers, or at least the, power, you know, the powers of those who actually have abilities, and then starts expanding outward. And so it's one of these things where it's like over the, over the course of time, no one knows how to stop Protégé, because everyone who goes towards him, everybody who faces him, if they use telepathy, he immediately knows how to use telepathy. If they use energy projection, he can copy their energy projection powers. If it's somebody like who can warp reality, he can do the same thing. This is when things get kind of hairy because when it, when you start talking about powers like reality manipulation and reality reality altering, then things get kind of weird. So the way this works in Marvel Comics is you have two types of powers. You have passive powers and active powers. Passive powers are powers that by whatever manner and whatever means, just activate on their own. So like Wolverine's healing factor is a passive power, but someone like Cyclops who has to actually open his eyes or someone like Nightcrawler who teleports, that's a, that's an active power. They have to actually think about doing it and activate that ability in order to be able to use it. With Protégé, it was a passive power to duplicate the powers of others. You combine that with reality altering or, or matter manipulation. So in Marvel, one of the things that people get confused all the time about is, is like reality warpers, right? So take Franklin Richards and then take uh, Mad Jim Jaspers. So Franklin Richards can just create things, but it's only in a universal space, right? Like Franklin Richards cannot adjust the multiverse. He can just tinker with an existing universe. But in, in Jonathan Hickman Fantastic Four run, when child Franklin's powers were restored by his, his future adult self, he created a universe in his bedroom. And he didn't do that by drawing on existing matter from, from the current universe. He literally just pulled it out of nowhere. So he can just kind of create something out of nothing. Those are reality warpers. They can just do whatever they want with the fundamental fabric of the universe, and it goes from there. Then you have matter manipulators. And matter manipulators are people 
people who can only manipulate the existing universe as it stands. So they can't create something out of nothing. So like Mad Jim Jaspers was like that. We know that because he was taken to a universe where there was no matter and then he was just a normal guy and he was he was ultimately destroyed. Protege is a is a reality warper. And because Protege had no upper limit to his powers, what this meant was that when the cosmic entities faced them, he duplicated all their powers so they couldn't stop him. It took the Living Tribunal showing up and even the Living Tribunal himself could not actually stop Protege. When the Living Tribunal showed up and, and started facing off against Protege, Protege started copying his powers like one after another. And so he was basically like this nigh omnipotent kid and then declared himself as the new one above all. And, and we would kind of have to continue on that trend and say if there was no upper limit to the powers that he could duplicate, then if the one above all appeared, then he'd be able to cap copy the powers of the one above all. Now, at that point, you're talking about two beings of equal power because nothing's more powerful than the one above all. If forever there was a ceiling to the amount of power a being could have, the one above all would be it. And so you're talking about two beings of equal power, like a battle like that would just lay waste to the multiverse in like the blink of an eye. I mean, everything would just, just cease to exist. But um, what, what ended up happening is in the story, in order to write themselves out, Jim Valentino created something called Scathe and the Approver. And this is, this is a celestial. So in Marvel Comics, and we're not going to go super in-depth into this, but in Marvel Comics, you have celestials, which were which were at one point humanoid beings who achieved like a super high level of technology and, and basically like transcended the physical form and became like, like beings of pure energy. So celestials travel through the universe and they basically, somewhere along the line, when the universe started, created life. The idea behind this is that they, they, they show up to a planet and they judge the life on that planet. And the Guardians of the Galaxy story, Scathe and the Approver was introduced as like a universal judge. And so Scathe and the Approver was either, he would either give like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And the indication was that nothing could happen in that universe unless Scathe and the Approver approved of it or dis disapproved of it. Now, in reality, the Living Tribunal never really seemed to need the judgment of others in order to decide whether or not something needed to happen. That was a long established fact that the Living Tribunal existed for the purpose of maintaining magical energies in a universe, meaning you couldn't have like two Doctor Stranges or you couldn't have like two Mistress Deaths or like two Eternities or something like that. And so when the Living Tribunal shows up to judge, for whatever reason, which was never fully explained, it, it had to seek the permission of Scathe and the Approver in order to decide what needed to happen. And Scathe and the Approver judged against uh, against Protégé and then the Living Tribunal just absorbed Protégé into himself because there was nothing else that could be done. And so you take that concept and you apply it to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and it's hopeless. And the reason why is because in, Mar in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, all the characters serve a role. Scarlet Witch is the magical side alongside Doctor Strange. Thor and, and the Incredible Hulk are like the heavy hitters. Iron Man is, is the brains of the operation and Captain America just runs and, and like he can punch kind of hard. Like different characters have different roles to play. But again, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe has always been grounded. It's always been like, what if superheroes existed in the real world? And so when you, when you start throwing in characters with more exotic powers, it does make things more interesting because say for example Thanos got the got the Infinity Gauntlet and then went to go fight uh, went to go fight Protege then Protege would basically adapt to the powers of the Infinity Gauntlet which means that Protege would develop reality warping time travel being able to read minds on a universal scale all those things would come together and he would basically become a walking talking Infinity Gauntlet or at least he would have enough power to rival that of the Infinity Gauntlet and then if you said Thanos showed up with like the heart of the universe it would be the exact same thing like the power of the one above all so you're talking about taking a character whose power is to literally duplicate all the powers of everyone he sees with no upper limit if anything it would be a stalemate you know now now that's okay that's kind of the crazy question because say for example the protege were to duplicate the powers of the hulk right like like reality warping and energy projection and all that kind of stuff is is a whole different beast and 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 it, <laughs> and it works it it works because i'm sorry mariah is distracting me right now it works because <laughs> it, it works for protege because Manipulating reality is manipulating reality. Being able to duplicate things like that is is what have you. But if Protege were, were to be able to duplicate the powers of the Hulk, would it be the exact same way? Like the Hulk gets stronger, the angrier he gets. If Protege duplicates that, does he does he automatically have like the upper limit to the Incredible Hulk's power? Is he just automatically that strong? You know, and is he just infinitely strong? I mean, I don't know. Like those are weird little questions that you have. But the long and short of it still remains: if Protege popped up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and sort of facing off against all the all the characters, there'd be nothing they can do. The only person that I would say might be able to stand a chance against him would be. Doctor Strange, and this is kind of a caveat. The reason why is because Doctor Strange in and of himself actually has no powers. All Doctor Strange does is, is use spells to manipulate the powers of others, uh, which become, which really kind of begs the question, would Protégé, if he faced off against Doctor Strange, be able to basically duplicate Doctor Strange's knowledge of the magical spells that he has at his disposal? And if he can, then he'd be able to beat Doctor Strange. But assuming that he cannot duplicate the knowledge of others, Doctor Strange would win. But if he could duplicate the knowledge of others, Doctor Strange would lose because, again, he's really the only person with powers. But, uh, but yeah, no, I don't know. 
Either way, it would be cool to see Protege in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but honestly, that'd be a short, that'd be like a one-shot movie. I mean, something like that, like Protege, the Beyonders, uh, Thanos with the Heart of the Universe, um, the original Beyonder, and like the Molecule Man, Owen Reese, or like uh, Doctor Doom during Doom War when he invaded Wakanda, stole all the vibranium, and like amplified his magical power. I mean, like characters like that and powers like that, those are in time stories like those are stories like like you'd have to pick one of those when you were gonna like wind down the marvel cinematic universe and end it that's one of the characters that you pick you know to kind of end everything either that or somehow it all gets reset back i don't, I don't really know like let me know what you guys think that in the comment section anyway if you are new here to comics explain make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the rob core if you guys enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and i will catch you all later peace